Okay, students. <clears throat> welcome, students. Welcome to lecture number twenty-two, where we will be continuing with module number three and the subject financial management. So, as we know, module number three or unit number three is nothing but sources of financing and cost of capital. Now, we are just left with determination of W, that is WACC, which is also called as weighted average cost of capital. the marginal cost of capital and we will see some case studies on weighted average cost of capital so today we will be, we will be covering determination of weighted average cost of capital and marginal cost of capital only the theory part in our next lecture we will take problems on these two so let us first understand what is weighted average cost of capital see students we have already learned the individual cost of capital that is capital like we have seen in in terms of debentures in terms of preferential capital in terms of term loans equity retained earnings so what we have seen we have seen individual cost of capital suppose if i tell you all if together if together i want to know what is the cost of capital it will like total cost of capital which also includes preference equity debentures term loans or any other source of capital if i want to know the total cost which the company will incur in raising the total finance okay then we will go for weighted average cost of capital where we will take an average of each source of capital that through which the company has raised the finance we will assign the weight and we will find out the total cost that the company incurs to raise the total finance again i'm repeating up to now we have seen individual cost of capital but all the individual when we club all the individual cost of capital okay it is called as the total capital and if we want to know what is the total cost for the total capital we will use weighted average cost of capital where we will assign weights to the individual capital and we will determine the total cost so let us understand this further so let us understand the meaning see the total cost associated with raising the total finance of the company so weighted average is nothing but where you are going to find out the total cost not individual when i say individual means it means single but all the singles when you will combine all the singles or individual it becomes total so the total cost associated with raising the total finance of the company it is also called as composite cost or vac usually they call it as vac that is nothing but weighted average cost of capital next it is used to find out the cost of capital sorry cost of total or combined source of finance so again as i told you when each individual source has been combined you get the total finance and finding out the cost for the total finance is your total cost which can happen through vac that is weighted average cost of capital next it is the cost of capital for all for all the sources of finance put together so this is very important here you going to find out the cost of capital for all the sources of finance suppose the company has raised finance through four means like one through equity maybe through preference debentures term loans so how do you calculate vac you consider all these four sources of finance all this four will be considered will be combined in order to calculate your weighted average cost of capital so this is very important it is a cost of capital for all the sources through which the company has raised its finance so now let us take an example like if the finance is raised through equity plus preference plus term loan therefore what is the total cost incurred to raise the finance through all the sources individually we are not going to calculate we are going to calculate in totality that if we want to raise finance through each of this 
uh, sources, we have to take the total capital that we have got through these sources and then find out the total cost on the total capital based on the average and weights. Okay, now how do we go about with this? So let us move ahead. Important points to be considered while calculating VAC. So cost of VAC, that is weighted average cost of capital, is denoted by K0 students, where 0 stands for overall cost of capital. So K, as you already know up to now, that it stands for the cost. K, the cost is denoted by the letter K. And this uh, O, this is O students, this O stands for overall cost of capital. So cost of VAC is denoted by KO, where O stands for overall cost of capital. Now, we have in weighted average cost of capital, how do you calculate the total cost? It completely depends on weights because see the name itself starts with weighted average so obviously you're going to assign weights to each of the source of finance now there are two types of weights okay or system of weights in back are of two types one is historical or existing weights and one is marginal weights now how do we uh, assign weights under the system let us understand First is historical or existing weights. Okay. Now, under this particular system of assigning weights, weights are assigned to individual source of funds in the ratio of their share in total capital. Means what share each source of fund has to the total capital, that will be the weight assigned. Is this clear? So, suppose equity there is equity there is debenture and there is preference through which the company has raised the finance so first you have to take total of funds that are raised through this sources and then assign weights based on what is the uh, value of funds each individual source has so under this method there are two ways of assigning weights one is book value weights and one is market value weights so either based on the book value what is the book value of equity what is the book value of preference what is the book value of you know different source of finance that is the bench or term loans based on the book value you will assign the weights or based on the market value what is the market value of each of the source of finance you will assign the weights so in the exam students they will tell you whether you have to calculate using the book value weights or market value weights this will be specifically mentioned in the problem whether you have to calculate VAC using the book value or whether you have to calculate VAC using the market value next system is about marginal weights so marginal weights mean weights are assigned based on the additional and incremental funds raised. See, when we say marginal, the word itself means that on any additional or incremental funds raised. So here, suppose equity, original equity, we had raised for suppose 50 lakh. Okay, so this becomes historical. Now, after two months, again, suppose one uh, 5 lakh has been raised. So this additionally what is raised five lakh only five lakh weights will be assigned to equity under marginal weights so under marginal weights only if any additional other than the original other than the initial if any additional or incremental funds are raised you will take only that additional value in calculating the weights or the incremental value in calculating the weights you will ignore the initial value under marginal weights so again, I repeat this particular slide. System of weights in VAC is two systems you have. Marginal weight system and historical weight system. In the exam, it will be specifically mentioned what you need to do, which method or which system you need to follow. So your weights are assigned. In historical, weights are assigned based on the individual source of funds. And in marginal weights, only the weights are assigned based on the additional or incremental uh, funds that is being raised. Is this clear, students? 
yes is this clear is this particular slide clear to everyone now we will also take an example to understand how the weights are assigned in case for book value or market value is this slide clear to everyone yes yes ma'am yes to okay now let us understand how do you calculate historical under historical weight method let me teach you all how to assign weights we have seen the theory part now let us understand it practically so we know under historical weight method there are two two further uh, systems to calculate weights that is when one is the book value weights and one is the market value based weights so as i already told you under book value weights which is there on your left hand side they are assigned on the basis of book value of a specific source of fund shown in the balance sheet of the company so under book value remember students you will take the value of each source of finance from the books of the company year the value of equity shares or maybe any source of capital it may be term loans debentures preference you will take that value from the books of the company so where will you find that value obviously in the balance sheet of the company under book value weights but under market value weights that you can see on the right hand side here you will assign the weights based on the market value like what is the value in the market or what is the market price and then you will multiply with the number of shares to get the value so here you will not consider the value uh, the book value you will consider the market value for each of the source of finance now here as you can see the different sources of capital that is uh, for example whatever source through which the company has raised the finance all the sources has to be returned okay i have just taken example three source from which the company is raising the capital that is equity preference and debentures what you have to do the second step is take their book value since we are uh, seeing book value weights this value of equity that you have got 20 lakhs this you have taken from the balance sheet of the company so write down the values pick it up from the balance sheet of the company and you write down the values now how will you assign the weights now the total you have to take the total uh, capital that is raised how will you get the total capital that is 20 lakhs plus 10 lakhs and plus 13 lakhs that is 43 uh, 43 lakhs now what is the percentage of equity share in the total capital equity capital is 20 lakhs what is the weightage of equity capital under the total capital so how do you calculate the weight 20 lakh divided by 43 lakhs similarly 10 lakh divided by 43 lakhs and similarly 13 lakhs divided by 43 lakhs so you will individually get the book value weights for each of the source of finance so weights are nothing but individually you will see what is the weight of individual source of capital in the total capital that is raised by the company means how much share does each source of capital have in the total capital of the company this is how you will calculate the weights under book value weights so it is very easy to calculate book value of weights that is all you need to do is <clears throat> divide the value of individual uh, source with the total finance raised so 20 lakh divided by 43 lakh you get 0.47 means 0.47 is the weightage of equity shares in the total capital of the company 0.23 is the weightage that preference share capital has in the total capital of the company and 0.30 is the total weight what debenture has in the total capital of the company and remember students the total of the weight should come to 1 then your weight what you have assigned is correct so always remember the total of the weight should come to 1 then you will uh, understand that whatever weight you have assigned to each source of capital is correct next 
market value weights obviously we go with the same procedure but instead of taking the book values we will see what is the market value of that particular source of capital in the market so again if you see this particular table first we write the sources of capital that is equity preference debentures then we see the market value here we are not going to go through the books to check what is the value we are going to check the value of equity shares in the market okay of that particular company whichever company so we take the market value weights we take the total we take the market value then we take the total of the complete market value and then we assign market value weights again the weights are assigned by dividing the individual capital value by the total funds raised so 22 lakhs divided by 49 lakhs similarly 12 lakhs divided by 49 lakhs similarly 15 lakhs divided by 49 lakhs so this way we assign weights under market value weights and always remember the total of all these weights should come up to one then you will realize that whatever weights you have assigned is correctly assigned so here now you now you will understand this particular uh, slide what I had already explained more clearly. So students again I am repeating in historical or existing weights what is happening. Weights are assigned to individual source of funds in the ratio of their share in total capital. So what did we see? We have taken the individual source that we in our next slide we had seen equity preference debentures that are individual source. We are assigned weights to the individual source. And how did we assign weights? Based of the based on the ratio they are having in the share in total capital. So I hope now this particular sentence is much more clear to you. So this is historical weight method where book value weights can be asked in the exam or market value weights nothing you'll need to do if it is book value weights just pick up the values from the balance sheet if it is market value weights you have to pick up the value from the market or what is the market price of the particular source of finance now is this particular slide clear in more uh, practically all will understand when you start solving problems but as of now is this particular slide clear students yes yes students yes ma'am and very important in market value weights you need to ignore retained earnings students can anyone tell me logically why we need to ignore retained earnings under market value weights yes students am i audible are you listening Yes, ma'am. Yes, students. Okay, so can anyone tell me logically why retained earnings are to be ignored under market value rates? Rates. Yes. Because obviously, what are retained earnings? Yours. They are saying. Yeah, yeah. Tell me, dear. They are our saving. We are not going to invest them. Now. Ah, then why? Do you... So obviously they will be not having any market value, right? Very yes. good. What is your name? Ankita Purvalkarma. Very good. Very good. Very correctly answered. Okay. Now let us move ahead to next slide. Now we seen how to assign weights. Now, how to find the stated average cost of capital, how to find the overall cost, how to find the total cost. So let us see what is the formula. Okay. And uh, how do we solve it? So this is one just example. So the weighted average cost of the cost of different sources of uh, sources is known as weighted average cost of capital. We know that different sources of finance, when we total up, we get weighted average cost of capital. Now, how do we calculate this? So students, there is a formula for calculating cost of overall capital, which is how you know, you take the individual cost, you multiply it with its weight. Then you add the next individual source of finance and then you multiply with the weight that it has. Then you add the next source of finance and then multiply with the weight that it is that is assigned to that particular source of finance or you can use a tabular table so first let us understand this formula now suppose in my example in this particular 
session, what example I'm using is equity preference debentures. These are three sources of finance through which the company is raising its funds. Okay, now if I say KE, so KE is cost of equity. So first you need to find out the cost of equity, multiply with W1. So W1 is the weight assigned to equity. Plus you take the cost of, find out the cost of preference shares, multiply with the weight of preference shares, then you, again you add cost of debentures, multiply with the weight that we have assigned to debentures. When you take the total of all this, you will get KO. Or you can use a tabular form, which is much more simple, simpler students. I usually prefer the tabular table because it is very good in uh, presentation as well. And it, it is more simpler. You will not get confused. So how do we solve it in the tabular table? So first you need to take five columns. Column number one will be your sources of capital. Means under this, you need to write the different sources of capital through which the company is raising its finance. So now in my example, the company is raising finance to equity shares, preference shares, 12% 12, uh, 12 debentures. The second column you need to write amount. Now this amount can be the book value or market value. So in generalized, I have just shown you all, either book value or market value amounts you can take. So what is the equity shares book value? What is preference shares book value? Debentures book value you have to take. In the third column, you have to assign the weights. Now can anyone tell me how did I assign this weights? How did I get 0 0.47, 0 0.23 or 0 0.30? How am I supposed to assign weights to each source of finance? Can anyone help me? To understand how did I assign these weights? Yes, students. How did I get the figures in column number three? Yes. We have just seen in a previous slide, right? How to assign weights. So can anyone tell me how did I assign 0 0.47 weight to equity shares? Yes. Ratio of their shares ratio of their share in the total capital so it is 20 lakhs how do you remove the ratio 20 lakhs divided by 43 lakhs i got 0 0.47 10 lakhs divided by 43 lakhs i got 0 0.23 13 lakhs divided by 43 lakhs i got 0 0.30 the total of all the weights should come to one so this is how i got weights now i have to find out your cost individual cost which we have already seen in the previous lectures how to calculate cost of equity we have seen five approaches based on the information given in the problem you will find the cost of equity you already know how to calculate cost of equity you either use any five five approaches are there use any of the approach and ca calculate the cost of equity so in the fourth column you need to calculate the individual cost and just put up in this column you know how to calculate cost of preferences Put up, put up the cost in this particular column. You know how to calculate cost of debentures. Then you have to solve, uh, like calculate the cost of debentures and you have to write it. So in this particular column, you will write all the cost after tax. Okay. Now, this is the fourth column. Now, fifth column, how is VAC calculated? VAC is calculated by 3 into 4. That is, you have to multiply weights into the cost so that is what is there in this formula also you will multiply cost into the weight plus cost into the weight plus cost into the weight so similarly in the fifth column you will multiply the column number three and column number four you will get vac then you have to take the total of all this you will get the overall cost of capital so when you take the total of 2.35 2.3 and 3.6 you will get 8.25 percent which is nothing but the weighted average cost of capital. So it is a total capital uh, which the company has a uh, total cost of capital which the company has to incur if it is raised 43 lakhs. So to raise 43 lakhs, it has incurred a cost of 8.25%. So is this clear students? So nothing, we just it is the same formula which we are putting it in a tabular form okay this is the same formula individual cost into the weight individual cost into its weight cost into its weight 
when we multiply and add it up, we get the total overall cost of capital. Is this particular table clear, students? Yes. So whatever sums are asked in back and back is very important from the point of view of case study students because majorly you will have one problem on back for sure in your final exams. So just if you remember this table, what are the columns that you need to put in, how to calculate uh, the different columns, then you can easily get the answer for back. Is this particular slide clear to everyone? Yes, students. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So can anyone tell me just to see whether you've actually understood? Source of capital. From where will you write this source of capital? Or will you write it by yourself? All the sources of capital will you write? Or what? which source of capital will you write in the column number one? Yes? I want a quick answer from you. Which all sources of capital will you write in column number one? Yes, and no, no, only those source through which the company has raised finance. Though now we know there are different sources of uh, capital, like there are equity, preference, debentures, term loans, retained earnings, but you will specify in your answer only those sources through which the company has raised finance. So if the company is raised finance only through equity and preference, you're just going to take equity preference and not debentures. So you're going to first of all, see in the problem, look into the problem that what are the source through which the company has raised finance, only those source you will mention in column number one. Now, can anyone tell me in column number two, if it is book value, then what will be the values that you will take in column number two? Yes, students. If you have to assign book value weights, then what is from where will you take the amounts in column number two? Yes. From balance sheet. Very good. Now, in column number three, how will you assign the book value weights? In column number three, how will you assign the book value weights? What is the formula you will use to assign weights? Yes, students. Students, did you understand the question? How are weights to be calculated? Yes. Ma'am, sources of capital divided by total amount. Very good. Now, that is the individual capital divided by the total capital. You will get the weights. Now, how do we calculate cost of individual source of capital which we have already seen you will use the formulas depending upon the information given we will calculate the cost how do i calculate column number five can anyone tell yes students now the answer is already there in the slide but still you are taking so much time to reply how will you calculate four. But three into four. You will multiply the weights with the individual cost. Okay. And then when you total take the total of all these rows, you will get the weighted average cost of capital. Okay. You will better understand this when we solve the problems. Now let us move ahead. Now let us understand the theory part of marginal cost of capital, which is called as weighted marginal cost of capital. Now let us understand first the meaning. The marginal cost of funds is the cost of the next increments of capital raised by the firm. So marginal cost is the additional cost, the incremental cost, which is incurred by the company to raise the additional funds or incremental funds. For example, this is the initial funds that is raised by the company. Now in, in the next period, if the company 
is uh, issuing again an equity of 50 lakhs or maybe 40 lakhs so that 40 lakhs that additionally funds that are raised that 40 lakhs is called as the marginal capital raised okay this is the initial original capital that is raised but over and about 20 lakhs if company is raising any funds through equity that over and above is called as the marginal capital now the cost of additional individual components of finance like shares, debentures, stone loans should be ascertained to determine the weighted marginal cost of capital. So students simple, simply suppose in this period it, it initially it has raised some capital. You ignore that when they are asking you marginal cost of capital. So in marginal cost of capital you have to just see over and above the initial capital that is raised what is the additionally the finance that is raised by the company only that additional finance okay on that you have to calculate the marginal cost of capital is the meaning understood by everyone yes is the meaning of marginal cost of capital understood by everyone ma'am repeat it once again See, marginal cost of capital is nothing but you are going to calculate the cost of capital. Now, you know what is cost of capital? That is the cost incurred to raise the capital. Now, what is this marginal cost of capital? It means additional cost of capital. Now, what is this additional cost of capital? Initially, we take I take this example only. Now, for the first time, the company has raised finance of 43 lakhs. Now, this is an initial capital that is raised by the company. Suppose in the next year, in the next year, the company has raised additionally 15 lakhs. Over and above 43 lakhs, the company next year has raised a finance of 15 lakhs. So what is the cost of this 15 lakhs? It's nothing but your marginal cost of capital. So marginal cost of capital is the additional cost that you want to calculate for raising the additional finance. Incremental. Incremental means additional, extra. So 43 lakhs is the initial cost of capital, which we can find out using VAC, correct? But for that 15 lakhs, extra 15 lakhs, you will use which method? Marginal cost of capital method. Under marginal, what will happen? You will calculate the cost only for that extra 15 lakhs, for that additional 15 lakhs. Is this clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes? Now it is yes, clear. So once again, I repeat the meaning. The marginal cost of funds is the cost of the next increments of capital raised by the firm. Means not the original or initial capital that is it. The next, if it is raising any capital, next if it is increasing its capital by any amount, calculating that cost is nothing but the marginal cost. So again, I this meaning I just uh, read once again. The cost of additional individual components of finance suppose additionally it is raising through shares also debentures also term loans i'm talking about additional not the original so the cost of additional individual components of finance like shares uh, uh, debentures term loans etc should be ascertained to determine the weighted marginal cost of capital now is this meaning clear to everyone yes yes ma'am okay now let us see the formula for calculating this see you know the formula for calculating vac now you know vac how to calculate weights individual weights into individual cost when you take the total of all the individual weights into individual cost you will get vac now how to calculate the formula for calculating this weighted marginal cost of capital nothing marginal weights into cost of capital for each source of source by which additional funds are raised see let me give you all an example suppose next 15 lakhs the company is raising only through equity shares and debentures that is suppose 10 lakhs again it is raising through equity and 5 lakhs through debentures so how will you calculate marginal cost you will when you cal when you do the solution you will take the cost of equity into that 10 lakhs 
weights that you will assign and you will take the cost of debentures into the 5 lakh weights that you're going to assign for debentures you will not take preference because in the additional capital raised preference share capital was not included though it is an original in the initial capital year that you're raising but in additionally only you have to consider those sources of finance through which the company is raising the funds okay then you will assign weights now suppose through equity it is 10 lakhs and uh, through debentures it is 5 lakhs now what is the total marginal capital can anyone tell me if through equity it is 10 lakhs and through debentures it is 5 lakhs what is the total marginal capital raised by the company students yes 15 lakhs 15 lakhs now how will you assign the marginal weights simple that is 10 lakhs for equity what will be the weight 10 lakhs divided by 15 lakhs so that is 0 0.67 and for debentures you will do how will you get the weight marginal weight that is 5 lakh divided by 15 lakh that is 0 0.33 so this way you assign the weights you take the cost you will get the uh, weighted marginal cost of capital is this clear to everyone yes ma'am so this is the way you calculate the marginal cost of capital in the exam students it will be given specifically mentioned that whether you have to use historical cost uh, whether the calculation should be based on your historical cost method or whether you are supposed to calculate as per the book value weights, market value weights, or whether VAC, that is weighted average cost of capital is asked, or weighted marginal cost of capital is asked. Everything will specifically mention in the problem. Based on that, you need to solve it. So thank you so much, students. We are done.